Welcome to our humble abode. This is your humble abode. Hi, how are you? Okay. Well, first, get somewhere where you can just tell us what's going on here. Okay. okay. Well, I'll take you for a tour of our building first. Downstairs, this is the this is our downstairs. And if you look outside when you go out to the back, you'll see where they boxed in the garage doors. Mm -hmm. Okay. At one point in time, this area right here were stables. Stable? Stables, where they had horses. Okay. Okay. This is where they had the carriages mm -hmm. and where they had the, the bears that they pulled. Oh, okay? okay. And then, of course, as they modernized, then they, they took the horses out and they cleaned this all out. And this is where they kept the, the horses and, 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 and all of their you know, their, their mobile units. Okay. Upstairs where the bar is, as far as we know, as far as every, the history says, is where they did the embalming. Uh, oh, really? Uh -huh. That's where they did it? Yes. And then in the later stages when they were doing cremations in the kitchen, <laughs> this might sound kind of morbid, this, this, is why we put, this is why we put the kitchen where it was, is because the, the, the um, vents were there. Oh, okay. For for for, yeah. the, for the crematory, but that was that was the crematory, and if you if you look at that window, where the kitchen goes, mm -hmm. that was it. Okay. I'll okay. Close the shutter. Then. And yeah. and um, when we go into the back room where the machines are, that was a viewing room. We're not certain. We're not certain on the other side where we have our liquor room. If that was a another viewing room or if it was a sitting room or a combination of both. We're really not quite for sure. Okay. Upstairs, which is totally trashed, is where we where they lived. The people that own this that they, they lived here. They lived above the funeral. Right. House. There's two more stories on the those are trashed up there now. Oh yeah, we that's, have two of our offices up there, but that's supposed to be most likely where you find ghosts. Where it's trashy. Yeah, <laughs> they and, like the chaos. And um, um, if you go up, up to the third floor, uh, it's you, you 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 can almost get that feeling that that there's that it's weird, you know. Okay. But a um, um, couple of the girls, a couple of the girls have seen things. Um, we had a, an instance down here because there's no smoking down here mm -hmm. um, where um, he has a picture of a party and when after the picture was developed you can see the yeah. so I'll show you that but but this is this is uh, pretty much you know when we've we've had instances of the girls um, they'll turn the TVs off and they'll come in through turn the lights off and they'll come back and the TVs are on. Um, we had one instance one day where the girl was just behind the bar and a, and a glass just burst. Wow. You know, so. No. What was I going to ask? Go come back. You had asked me if they want an exorcism or if you like your ghost. Yeah, exactly. What do you want here? Do you want to know information or do you want to get rid of them? No, I don't think they want to get rid of them. For the most part, it seems to me like they're, they're, they're friendly. We had a, a lady that was here from Cleveland. Um, her husband is a member of, of a post up in Cleveland. They were mm -hmm. here for something. And she came in and she said, I, I can feel the presence. Okay. She was at the stairwell when we go upstairs and she said, the, the son of the owner. She, she felt that that's who it was, was the son of the owner. Oh, okay. She could feel his okay. presence. Okay. Yeah. You know, so obviously, you know, well, I'd like to find out, what I'd really like to find out is the history of the building is what happened to the people who ran the funeral home. Did they, mm -hmm. did they just die a natural death or mm -hmm. was there, was mm -hmm. there, you know, and, and my, my perception is, is that when people leave this world, they don't come back if their life is done. If they're, mm -hmm. if they leave and their life is not complete, that's when they come back. They, 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 they come through until mm -hmm. that, that is met. It's like, you know, um, my wife on a different subject, every once in a while she'll have visions of her dad mm -hmm. or she'll go home and she'll feel his presence mm -hmm. but he died unexpectedly mm -hmm. my dad died of cancer he was 75 years old all of us kids were raised mm -hmm. i have not and my other brothers have not had any right right it's but this is the, hey daryl do you have that picture yeah i do oh. This, this may require several visits from us. We don't care. And do you have a problem with uh, an overnight here where we can set up equipment? No. 
None, yeah, none, none be, whatsoever. Because I'd like to bring back, this is just an initial interview. Okay. I'd like to bring back the psychics to let them just walk in and see what they can pick up. And then I'd like to bring back my equipment and stay, say, from 10 to 2 o'clock in the morning sure. see what I can pick sure. up. Sure, that's no problem. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I took that oh, yeah. at a party yeah, a couple, of, a couple, couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I actually took this picture. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when I was pointing the camera out there, there was there was nobody, there was no smoke, there was nothing. I took it with a digital camera, cool. and when I looked at my camera, I went like, "Look at that!" That's unbelievable! Oh wow! Okay. They joined the party. <laughs> yeah, and I, I kept looking at it, looking at it. The more you look at it, the more you see like the smoke's kind of going up and down yeah. and <clears throat> different oh, directions. Jeez. This down here. Yeah, this, this is right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. My camera over right here. What do you want? I got a camera in there. Just take oh. a quick picture to see what we can get. I have a camera too. Yep, start snapping. Okay. <laughs> the more the merrier. Because okay. some people might be better at it than others. Your camera in here? Yeah. Isn't it? Uh, oh, I see it. Okay. All right. Okay. What's right? Get the rest here. Okay. See what we can get. There we go. And since this was the horse era, ooh, nice antiques. <laughs> Maybe something connected with that. Could be. With what? With the uh, the rifle. Something could be attached to it. The rifle's been here for longer than we can remember. I don't know if there's a date on it or not. It's, it's World War One vintage. I didn't know if there was any. 1594. Don't know if you're getting. Do you have anything? Remember an E O, E F O. Went over. Went over. Leo, Leo went over, Junior. And it was donated in uh, January of '94. That was before I got here. Could be something connected to that. Okay. Well, I was even a member. Mm -hmm. Sure, some more. Right. If this, if this wasn't the actual mortuary. This is the entrance. No, the uh, they, this area would be where the carriages were kept. Carriages, the carriages yeah. and the and horses. There was a door, doors back here. As okay. I told them, mm -hmm. if you look back there, you can see where they bricked it in the garage mm -hmm. doors. Mm -hmm. and then eventually, if it, they, they had, they had to be here for, for some time because those garage doors are for free for. You're not going to take them up in the third floor, right? Yeah, yeah well, I can go uh, there. The third floor is the, you'll. There's a lot of debris going up there. You'll have to watch your step. We it, we haven't ever cleaned it out, but there used to be um, Boy Scouts meeting up there. But it's it's pretty it's pretty tore up. And it's I think pe people were kind of people were kind of scared to go up there anymore after a while. That's most likely where you're going to find something. And maybe in the basement too. Yeah. Anything that's weary and eerie, we want to see it. This area is where. This area is where they they did the embalming and, and, and things like this. And like I said, if you if you can picture it, that whole room was the was where they did in the where the kitchen is is where they did the the, the cremation and that hood is is where that's, that's why we okay. sure it was. I mean it's kind of gross, but cooking in a crematory. <laughs> Hi. 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 This is the, the, in this part we, we're not really certain of it. If you just kind of look at the dynamics of the, mm -hmm. of, of, the, of the place. And there's a, another room in here that's not quite as big. Ooh. This has character. So we don't know whether this was, a, this was. appears to me like it would be more of a sitting room because mm -hmm. of the size. Mm -hmm. But this is the door, of course, We've got this lodged up against. We're going to throw this away. But this is the door that the girls notoriously will close, and then when they come back, it'll be open. Not all the way, just just a tad. Nothing now. Okay, back here. Okay. <laughs> and we can get you downstairs. Okay. I mean, that's not a problem. This is. What was you can't this? do it right now. It's okay. At least when the psychics come back, we'll let you. Why is it that nobody can go through the front door? 
We, you can. Like somebody told me that. No, the only you reason. Die if you go through that. The only reason that. <laughs> this uh, is somebody told me. The only reason that we keep the front door locked mm -hmm. is because of the people that are on the street. The neighborhood. Okay. Okay. And and when we when the girls leave at night, mm -hmm. they go through this door. Mm -hmm. When they when they come when we come in, we come through this door. Okay. You know? this is a good but thing. if you want to come up, yeah. I can get you to the second floor where our okay. offices and stuff are. Okay. I'll get you this is character here. We've tried to, we've tried to, tried to piece this all together, um, possibly on how the people live. Okay, um, let me see. Yeah, I need we just recently partitioned this room off, so you have to kind of use. Need a wider angle. I gotta find the right Maybe key. Maybe from there to there? No, a wider angle camera. Oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna take one to get all of this. This room here, if you go on the other side, I'll get take you. This was all open. Uh -huh. We just partitioned this off recently. But this had to be the living room of the house. Okay? And we think that maybe this room was maybe the kitchen. Okay. Up here, okay. Or this room over here. I don't know if I can get into the ladies' office or not, but the ladies' presence down there. Because there's a bathroom here. I'll have to get a key for this. This is open. You can go up. I see what you mean. See, this was this is this was all open. So this we think that this was the living room, that this room over here was either the kitchen or the pantry. And that was either, the, and that was the dining room, okay. And then if you go upstairs, which yeah, I see what you mean. Is we'll, we'll try to get this cleared out so we yeah. can get up there a little more safer. Yes. But it appears to me that at one time that probably the bedrooms were up there. That makes uh -huh. sense. If this uh -huh. was the living area, okay. the public area, yeah. the bedrooms. And yeah. and if like I said, this this is a big closet here, so I think that was a pantry, bathroom. And this was either the kitchen or the dining room, but you can just or maybe their office, you know. But you can picture how they left, how they lived. Okay. Go oh, here. I got you. <laughs> this one now. Yeah. A lot of times, a lot of times the people who have felt any kind of presence, they usually feel it right in this stairwell and downstairs in this this one room where the viewing room is. This feels interesting to me. I'm not that sensitive, but this... Is it interesting to you? I mean, it feels interesting. Okay, so you feeling it? So I see what the cycle is about this point. Are, Are this... you going to bring Ruby or Angel? Or no, uh... Shock theater? Uh, she didn't show up. I don't know if she. Mm -hmm. told her, but we'll see if Angel can get back. There. Oh, cool. Okay. And uh, she maybe only need to get more than one side of the ear to start. That's okay. <laughs> Getting on each other's nerves. So I have to pick who I have to bring. Maybe uh, Angel and, uh, and Eileen. And she hasn't been out for a while. Okay. And she's not really. She's more than an observer. So they probably won't be interfering with each other. If you, if you, I mean, if you look at the some of the woodwork in here, the natural woodwork, yeah, is beautiful. Yeah. There's a beautiful building at one time. Yes, it is. I see that? Well, I, we used to have a Victorian beach house, and these rails, the wood reminds me of it actually. Mm -hmm. Look like, like something that an undertaker could afford. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, right. It'd have to be pretty affluent. But um, the, the one lady downstairs might know what the name of this was, but I'm sure that we've got some members in here that can okay. tell us what the, originally what the name of the... And see, there was a funeral home right across the street, too. Uh -huh. one, of the, one, of those, one of those buildings, there was a funeral home across the street, too. But I, You know anything about the history of the area here? Anything happening? Either? I don't particularly, because I'm not from here originally. Okay. Um, but th mean. there's there's the fellow that owns Sid Towing. Sid Towing. Um, Sid's towing over here on uh, one of the side streets. I can't. Monette. Mm -hmm. His parents. This is when you come down here on 
where Third and Linden come together yeah. across from the bank, there's a old grocery store that yeah. has the big mural on it. I believe that his parents own that. Okay. I don't know if they own the building or the grocery store or both. It seems to me that one time they, I was under the impression that his parents own that. And again, I said I don't know if it's the building or stuff, but those people are the people that grew up here all their lives would, would probably know more about this than this area than we would. And we do have quite a few people in here that have lived here all their lives. Okay. It, it probably would not be a bad idea to come in here like on an evening, early evening when they're yes. here and, and just take them back and talk to them. Mm -hmm. they, they probably could give you a lot more information about, you know. And the information that I got actually is I got from, from people who, who, who knew of it more as well as, you know, mm -hmm. that their parents and stuff. Okay. See, at one time there was this post down on uh, down the street. There was a VFW 9494, which is no longer in existence. If you go down this way, right across from from the um, U-Haul, there was an American Legion post in an old big Victorian building like this, and I believe that was a funeral home too. Oh my! And um, there was one of these buildings across the street was a funeral home, mm -hmm. but I don't know which one. Mm -hmm. So. Wow. So many morning. Okay. All right, I'm going to go to my car and get you. Yeah, probably one of the places. That's good. And like I said, when you look at when you look at this part of the building, mm -hmm. you can you can actually visualize where the horses and the and, and, and stuff were. This probably is where they. This probably is where they had them outside or, or over here. Because this this land was ours too. So I I picture this as maybe where they where they kept them when they weren't inside the. Inside right the to exercise the move. Yes. To, it looks like right. this may have been a main street, not just an alley. Because it's Could be. like that. Could be. Got those cobblestones down there. You wouldn't do that in an alley, I don't think. That's something. Mm. Like I said, it's pretty interesting when you mm -hmm. when you start to look around. Mm -hmm. A lot of historic buildings down here. Oh yeah. If you, uh, yeah. yeah. If you go down, if you go down Ringgold, there's some, some really beautiful buildings. Yeah. But this is the Huffman Historic House. That building right? over there is the one that I believe was the funeral. Was the funeral parlor? Yes. Really. Uh -huh. It's just that they modernized the, the front of it. Okay. Which is kind of funny because on this side of on this side mm -hmm. of Third Street, mm -hmm. we're deemed historical, mm -hmm. and there's we're limited to what we can do That's to the outside of the building. Yeah. Across the street, they're not. So That's they can. Crazy. They can do whatever they want. So so if you if you look at the if you look at the steeple of that building up there. You can almost picture that the front of it would look yes. real similar to yeah. ours. Yep. Okay, but they've modernized the front yeah. of it. Huh. These people here, they had a, the, the across the street. Their building was of this original brick, and they they painted it to make it look nice, mm -hmm. and they were fined like five thousand. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Hello, Ghost Hunter fans. We're back here at the Via W Post, and there's a dead man and Laura, and we are here with one of our, I guess, one of the original residents, Dale Hill. Who used Dale to, Mills. Dale Mills. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. We used to live here at the Via Owned it. Born here in 1934, right? Laura knows more, more about the individual. <laughs> you do some for us. <laughs> Uh, Dale was born here, and you also lived here lived until here. you married in '55. Mm -hmm. So you have like a bazillion right. of stories to tell us in that time. <laughs> oh, whoa! <laughs> like I showed you upstairs there when the FBI was here, and he was checking the house that used to be right next door right. for the well, bank robbers, and they, they, they caught him. The and they got the money out of the refrigerator. <laughs> Did they give you any? No. <laughs> <laughs> Our government. Yeah. <laughs> And you know, like I said, you're probably sitting in where the casket showroom was mm -hmm. okay. when I was young. Yeah. Because there was this one. This was built after I was born. I was born in '34, and this was all backyard out to the alley. Mm -hmm. Well, not to the alley. There was a big old 
like a garage, the like the biggest, a lot of garages, if you look around here and you've been around here, you probably mm -hmm. see them. Yeah. They're two stories. Uh, I figured it was carrying the house for horses. Uh, horses in that when he was young. Before they had cars. Yeah. Because my dad, when he got in the fuel home business, he re on the yes. west side. Yes. Okay, yes. well, that's how my dad got into being an undertaker. Frank uh -huh. Reesinger was his uncle. Yeah. My grandmother was a Reesinger. Yeah. We know and, a street named Reesinger. Yeah. And when, yeah. He, and when he was out there, mm -hmm. they had horse and buggies yet. Uh -huh. When he worked, worked for him for where he got his fuel director license then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there was a Dayton Reesinger over here on Wayne Avenue. Mm -hmm. okay. Called Kid Dayton. He was a fighter. <laughs> he fought when they used to fight downtown at uh, Memorial Hall. Okay. Yeah. Did you have any uh, like ghostly experiences here when you were living here? No. No. Nothing. Got a few times I wouldn't come up that ramp I was telling you about <laughs> because like in 50, 53 or fifty four after because I got out of school in fifty three I was working for calls. Uh huh. And uh, I was going to work one morning. And I got home and told my dad I said who was the unlucky undertaker got them two guys that burnt to death this morning in that garage fire out on North Dixie. Yeah. He said, we did. I said, no, we didn't. I put the car in the garage, come up the map at 2 in the morning. You ain't got nobody down there. He said, if your nose hurts you, you go back down on the ramp. There's two leather bags down there on cots. Open one of them up. And I did. I smoked. But I didn't smoke for about six months after that. Ooh, That's the worst smell you ever smelled. And I, I, never, I never opened no more. Ooh, okay. But, uh, yeah. That, and I know one time when I was young, I, I wouldn't put my bicycle in the garage either. We had a uh, uh, guy drowned. Mm -hmm. I guess they still do it in, in here in Dayton. Mm -hmm. Man, he was rich and had money, mm -hmm. but he was fishing over here at Mad River. Yeah, he didn't have nothing no ID on him. Well, at that time they thought he was a bum. Mm -hmm. Well, every undertaker had to take turns yeah. burying him for the city. Yeah. Well, they had to have somebody else got him. Well, they found out who he was. Well, that wood casket they put him in, they brought him out here. They had to take it, they had to tear it up and burn it. Because the smell from mm -hmm. him being in the water so long got in the wood. Couldn't, but I, I, my bicycle didn't go in the garage, then it got part of the side of the house. <laughs> I wouldn't go in. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So if you're, you had a pretty normal experience growing here. Oh, I did, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, except like for the it. FBI man checking the place all around. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's name, one of them's name was Hunter. I can remember that. When you were a little boy and you wanted a friend to come home and play with you after school, how did the parents of other children feel about them coming over to play in a funeral parlor? Didn't bother them anymore, I think, than it did anybody else. Really? Because they just come over and, like, like I said, this was all built after when I was young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd play in the backyard, and they'd play, in, like I said, up there on the third floor. We played with a train set up there. We played up there and played games and stuff and toys. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't hear it clear down here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so yeah I guess. It never bothered them. Yeah. They'd stay overnight. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned that one unusual thing you did as a little boy. Now I'm going to open up all the secrets here. Um, when there would be, because the front door is on 3rd Street, it's not the side door that you come into in the yeah. And there was a foyer in the viewing room to the left and mm -hmm. your offices to the right. See, I remembered. Okay, but you used to stay on the landing and watch the funerals. Yep, I used to lay on the landing up there when I was little. Watch all the funerals, because I mean, you had all kinds of different ones and you had different religions. And, I mean, to me, a lot of them were just funny because I, you didn't think about it. Yeah, yeah, that's where you are when you're kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And then see a lot of these people around here I used to tell my dad when I got old enough to drive, they was going to call him when they died. And he said, "Why?" He said, "Because Dale's going to come and pick us up with a hearse, and we're going to get a tour of Dayton before we get back to the funeral home." <laughs> and I said, uh, <laughs> "They don't <dulled> on me." <laughs> Because I never went to the hospital or whatever and come straight back. <laughs> I might go downtown, ride around, or somewhere else, but I didn't get here. <laughs> and then, see, we had a funeral home on West 3rd. Uh, you know where Roosevelt High School was? Yes, I went there. Did you? Yep. you graduate? Uh, 68. 68, well, yeah, you was probably still there when that 
That was just Grant Reesinger's. Yes. He was a cousin to my dad. Well, he died. And after he died, Dad bought that place in that big white building there. Carolyn's Flower Shop was right next door to it. Yeah. 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 And it had a big garage right through the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they never put a lock on the door. Or yeah. <laughs> they never had a lock or nothing. Yeah. And they stole the, they used to steal the sheets <laughs> and the blankets off of the cot in the ambulance. Oh, my goodness. Not all the time, but every night. Just now, sometimes. Steal. Yeah, in cold weather. That's yeah. funny. But they never had a lock on them doors out there. Because my brother, after he got out of the Second World War and come back, he, he brought a couple of guns back with him, and he used to carry a 32 at night. <laughs> he said, you didn't know who you was walking into, and him, all you heard was a bell ring, and you go down there, and he's already in the house. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so just yeah, so pretty know, exciting know. childhood. You got an education that, that, about the all entire taking so. all of the neighborhoods, all yep. the different religions. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Unusual childhood, you know, pretty good education. Yeah, I like it. Except when I got in high school, because I was a black sheep in the family. I was never wanting to worry about. As long as I got a passing grade, that's all I cared about. <laughs> Where'd you go to high school? Well, right. Oh, okay. Up here on the big hill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's grade school, I think now. I think yes, sort down there. Grade school, yeah. Out of it. Yeah. Did they have yeah. a soapbox derby there? Yeah. They had them on. They had them on Huffman Hill out there and back, and they had them on Burkhart Hill. Yeah. Okay. So much time. Yeah. We went through all of that. Yeah. Because we used to go up there on Huffman Hill where it went across Smithfield. Yes. When I was young and 16 and didn't have no brains, <laughs> we'd take car. Everybody take their cars up there and put them in dead stop in third yes. gear yes. and see whether you could get up that hill without yeah. burning your clutch out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We used to go down. I can't even think. I can't remember that place there where we always ate right, right below the school. Uh, we go down and get hot dogs. Mm -hmm. I can't think of the name of it now. Just a little place on the side, one very big, and you had a little place you go in one door and out the other. Yeah. How did you feel? Okay, now you came to visit. You grew up here. You obviously you moved away. You have a family. You have a whole life and mm -hmm. all of that. What was your first feeling when you walked back in the door after all of that time today, or the first time you walked back in here? Oh, it's changed. <laughs> okay. All right. The it's, only thing I don't think it's really changed is the upstairs. Oh, yeah. Well, nothing but I mean, it's, well, like, yeah. even for storage area and that, yeah. the, the old kitchen's still there, the bathroom's there, but the clawfoot bathtub mm -hmm. and that's gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, that was another window in the back. Mm -hmm. I used to go out that on the roof. Oh to the garage and that well over this. Mm -hmm. I go out there all the time. And, uh, but the bedroom, the living room and everything upstairs is still there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all the same and, and the attic on the third mm -hmm. floor. <laughs> That's where we played when we were real young. Yeah. yeah. Cold weather would be up there. But yeah, we had, uh, yeah. Cheatham's lived over here on June Street. He was over here a lot. Run around with them kids. They had a big family, eight or nine kids. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I find, I find it interesting. Um, you lived the life of a an undertaker's son. Mm -hmm. So you had a lot of, we'll say, unliving people here <laughs> passing yeah, through. I mean, you had guests dead. who were all dead. <laughs> and their souls or their spirits were somewhere. And I know after the changes then, now this is a VFW. Now they're experiencing the orbs and all of that. Mm. So are those the people who had passed through here? Or, and they were, but then they must have been pretty relaxed when they were here. Like maybe because you were a happy family, maybe not, I don't know. They, they just came through, okay. They just came through, Yeah. whereas why they came back to visit once it became a VFW? Like, is that interesting? They didn't linger. They didn't stick around. You know, after the party left and he watched them from the landing and they left, <laughs> he was good with that. They were good with that. And then is it now, are they coming back for a reunion? It's a party area now. <laughs> right. That's, yeah. that's what maybe they think, oh, wow, cool. Now we're going to get the party. No, no, we do. We do have a party building over there on uh, Troy Street where something similar is happening. Uh -huh. so it could be the same thing happening here. 
Maybe, but I find that interesting. Yeah. That's why I, I said we it felt never bothered me. That's why I, I can't say I, it yeah. never bothered me a bit. Well, that was the way of mean, life, yeah. you know. And and, and well, he, yeah. that's why I asked when he came back in, did he yeah. feel a difference yeah. other See, than physically? Like where I said, right up over in here was where the Moors was on the other side of that wall. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jim Angel lived over here on Second Street. <clears throat> I knew where the morgue table was. Mm -hmm. The light switch was over on the opposite wall. So when you come up that ramp, and I'd always tell them when they come with me, I said, you wait, let me go through, turn the light on, because the morgue table was in the middle of the room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew where it was. I'd just go like this and hit it, walk right around it, and mm -hmm. the light switch while Jim followed me through one night. Mm -hmm. He'd go stay all night too, but he didn't stay there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, there was a woman on the morgue table, and he happened to reach down and got a hold of her ankle. <laughs> oh. Just as I turned the light on. Oh, gosh. And that was it. He didn't stay. I'd take him home. He lived over there and take him home. He, <laughs> then his mother and dad said, yeah, he said, we'd turn the lights out. And he was up turning them on. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> That's funny. And then another one I had, Bill Howard, a kid I rode around with for years, went to school with. We went and picked the man up one night at the VFW. Yeah. Out, uh, not VFW, but the veterans home out there on North, uh, uh, West Third Street. Yeah. yeah. Well, they'd done an autopsy on him. Uh -huh. We got in the hearse to come back, and Bill was sitting there in the front. I said, What are you holding? He said, I don't know, that package that guy would give me. I said, He didn't give you that package that was supposed to have been on top of the man on the cot. That's his lungs <laughs> and, oh. his, and his breast, chest bones where they opened him up. <laughs> they had to put all that back in. The undertaker's always done that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But he <laughs> he was holding it and he he gave it a pitch to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But, so know, you actually were in the body pickup service. Oh yeah. Why well, help my dad? Yeah. Okay. Well, you always did. Okay. Funeral directors always had to go get them. Yeah. He always picked the body up. And then we picked one up up here on, uh, right up here by the V, by yeah. where the V bar used to be in that yeah. behind there. Yeah. That old guy, I've known him for years. I can't say what his name is now. But I wasn't too old. Well, maybe, and, you, uh, you're, maybe they see you as sort of a, a friendly, <laughs> a, re a reaper. <laughs> so we went up yeah, you we stick our parts him. back yeah. in us. That was one of the first I ones I'd ever been in I'm to sorry. pick up. Spiritually and he alone. shot himself. <laughs> oh, goodness. He laid down on the bed and put a 12 gauge yeah. double barrel in his mouth and pulled both of them. Okay. And uh, that sh shook me. No. Yeah, that's another kind of box. Well, we want to thank you for your stories that you were kind enough to share with us. You're welcome. We're glad for your time. And thank you very much. I hope that our audience have enjoyed hearing from Dale Mills. <laughs> uh, used to be the owner here, he grew up here. And we My thank you for sharing your dad on the place. We thank him for sharing it to you. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Nelson. Okay. We are here at the VFW on East Third Street. Um, I think it's called the Dayton View VFW Post at 2017 East Third Street. And we are talking with some of the workers and guests here who have had experiences uh, with the paranormal. Uh, first person I'm talking with here is Jackie, and Jackie, relate to me some of the stories that you have experienced sure. here. I'm an auxiliary member here, mm -hmm. a ladies auxiliary, okay. and I was asked if I would like to donate my time and attend bar in the evenings. Mm -hmm. I said, sure, no problem. Yes. The old commander that used to be here, mm -hmm. as he walked me through everything, he took me upstairs into this building. And keeping in mind, I was raised in this neighborhood mm -hmm. from a young child, yeah. and I knew this to be a funeral home at one time. Okay, so now it's a, a veterans VFW, mm -hmm. veterans of foreign war post. Okay. And the commander, when he walked me through everything, the first thing he said to me, I thought he was joking. Mm -hmm. He took me upstairs and he says, oh, by the way, you're not afraid of ghosts, are you? And I kind of chuckled. I was like, nah, they don't bother me. So I didn't think any more of it. I thought he was kidding. So as time went on, I continued to start bartending here at nights 
and I was by myself, left to ten bar and close it up by myself. And one particular night, I was here. We used to have a camera right in front of our cash register, which showed a hallway that you have to come up to enter the building, and you have to use a key card to get in or ring a bell. There's a window there, mm -hmm. and you can see when people come in and out. Mm -hmm. This particular first incidence that I had, I happened to be doing a closeout. I had already locked the bottom door and the entrance door, and that's when the people had left. And I was checking the register out, and I noticed in front of me in the camera, I see a shadow coming straight up to the top of the door. And I'm thinking, I know I locked that door. There's no way anybody could have been in there. And then the thought came to my mind, uh-oh, maybe the camera can't catch it, you know, from being on the floor. So I started to come out between the bar, and if you can picture like a coin tapping on glass, tap, 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 mm -hmm. I heard this on our door entrance. Mm -hmm. So I thought, uh-oh, somebody's there. So I went over and I looked through the window, looked straight down thinking maybe the camera couldn't catch it. And there was no one there. I did see the shadow, it came up, I heard the knock on the doors, and then I got suspicious of the place. So after that, I became leery. Now this went on for several weeks of feeling like there was something here. And so anyway, I decided I had a, a regular recorder at home, just a little pocket model. I brought it in, I sat it on the bar, and I played it and I explained if there's someone in here that would like to speak to me, say your name, you know, I'm not that experienced. I was just playing around, seeing if I could capture any voices. So I went ahead and went about my checkout of everything, got all the money straightened out, left the recorder going, and as I had to go upstairs on the second floor, there's three floors to this building, I found out that one of the drawers that I would keep my things in mm -hmm. at night used to be a housing for babies caskets. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this at the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so while I was upstairs, then I came back down, mm -hmm. keeping in mind there's no one in the building but me. Yeah. Um, I shut the recorder off, I took it home, and I played it. And, it, and naturally there was a time span because it was upstairs. Mm -hmm. And when I listened very carefully, I heard a, a voice whistle to me. It went, and I'm thinking, whoa. <laughs> so that made me very leery. Yeah. After seeing the apparitions of something coming up the hall, and then that happened. Yes. Shortly after that, it was in the middle of the evening. I have a witness, but unfortunately he's not here tonight. Mm -hmm. There was a patron sitting at the bar. I was at the corner of the bar, and we had a refrigerator with a stack of rock glasses and a bar towel across it. Yeah. I was beside of it wiping the counter down. And about that time, I heard the bar patron, his name's Frank, mm -hmm. he went, before he could even get whoa out, he saw the towels lift. And all of a sudden, I heard an explosion. It sounded like a gunshot. Yeah. And what happened was, the towels lifted, the glass exploded, and it was in the center. All the other glasses was not disturbed. The glass lifted up and exploded, sounded like a gunshot, and it shattered all the way across the bar. If anyone had been sitting there, they would have been cut. It took me quite a while to get that clean, and I could only wish he would have been here tonight to verify the fact that he witnessed all that. We may get a chance to talk about it. Exactly. Yeah. So shortly after that, it became Halloween, October. Mm -hmm. My husband came in, and they allowed him to go into the basement of this, which I've been afraid of uh, because our stock room, the basement leads into that. Mm -hmm. And every time I go to the stock room, every night at closing, the door will come open, 
And I first thought maybe it could have been from opening the other door. Yeah. So I left the door open, so to debunk it per yeah. se, yeah. and the door was still come open, like someone's watching me. So I was always afraid of that basement. So they allowed my husband to take our digital camera, brand new, mm -hmm. brand new batteries, fully charged, to go down into the basement and see if he could capture anything with yeah. our camera, a digital camera. As soon as he went down to the basement, right away, he saw a white mist go by, and then all of a sudden I hear him yelling, Jackie, the batteries are dead. I can't see anything. They're dead. I'm like, well, come back upstairs. I'm not coming down there. I was afraid of down there because I know something was watching yeah. me. Yeah. So he comes back up. I said, let me see the camera. And he looks at it. We shut it off, turn it back on, and boom, it's working. He said, well, let me try it again. He goes back down to the basement. Same thing. Batteries went dead. It didn't drain the batteries. It just would not allow him to capture anything. Mm -hmm. And the second time when he went down, he heard a fluttering. Like if you could picture a flag shaking, yeah. you know, flapping or wings flapping, he heard that. Yes. And he's not here, unfortunately. And if you would like to speak with him, that's, that's we'll try possible. To. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, the moral to that story, of that part of it, is that after that night, I really was leery of that door going to the basement because I, like I said, I would never go into that basement. I was, I was scared. Yeah. So I decided to put a couple cases of beer against the door, mm -hmm. heavy, so there's no way anything yeah. could push it open. Wind, to yeah. you know, prove my point that it's not wind. Yeah. At the end of the night, because it stays locked during our hours of operation, you know, for obvious reasons. I went in there, and when I opened the door, I looked at the basement door mm -hmm. where I put the cases of beer. Mm -hmm. They were moved in the middle of the floor. Okay. So they are very heavy. Yeah. They're very yeah. heavy, and I'm, a, I'm kind of small, but they're cases. <laughs> there was about four cases. So something told me something, because no one else was in there all mm -hmm. night but me. Yeah. Something moved those yeah. so it could still have access to watch me. So that made me leery. And then the last thing I can tell you that really spooked me the worst was um, right before I, I wasn't helping them out here at night anymore. I was already creeped out <laughs> enough. <Okay. laughs> uh, first of all, during the hours of operation, you know, keep in mind everything that's happened to me so far. Yeah. I happened to turn around and I caught a glance at the other side of the bar here mm -hmm. between the two doors, the opening to go to the back because there used to be a pool table set. Yeah. I seen a shadow, but I didn't say anything to anybody because I didn't want them to think, yeah, she's yeah. crazy, you know. Yeah. I just didn't say anything. So I went ahead. The business was slow, and then finally our last customer came in, mm -hmm. and I'll wrap this up with my last and final statement, and it, it's the most scariest to me of all the things of the glass shattering, of the knocking on the door, of the shadows. Um, they had moved our camera that was behind of the bar at the register. They moved it up on the wall, okay. and it was like a four-way camera. It could capture outside the hallway. Mm -hmm capture inside the bar in case anything happened. Yeah. Yeah. So I had already did my clothes out, went upstairs, did everything I had to do, went in the stock room, everything except for get my coat off behind the bar. Mm -hmm. When I went to get my coat, there was not a soul in there because for the longest time, there's a gentleman here now that's upstairs. Mm -hmm. I had to make him come in here and stay with me at night because I was too scared to be by myself. But this last statement, the last thing that happened to me, and I'll never forget it, is unless I get Alzheimer's and forget yeah. my memory, um, I happened to grab my coat, and for some reason, something told me to look up at the camera, and I could see myself. Mm -hmm. As I was watching myself, I grabbed my coat, I looked up, and there was a giant shadow overpowering my body, mm -hmm. and I could see it moving in like the Grim mm -hmm. Reaper, yeah. closing in on me. I was so scared, I don't know why I didn't run out from behind the bar, but I grabbed my coat, I crouched down like a little child, 
and I ran around the complete circle of the inside of the bar screaming, no, 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 leave me alone, leave me alone, get away, get away, get away. And I ran out, went to the front, set my alarm, and I got out. I was so shaken that night, I had to sit out in the parking lot for at least two to three minutes to calm down just so I could drive home. But yes, I do believe that there is some some activity in this building. Yeah. I experienced it for almost two years. Yes. And, okay. and it was definitely, I mean, you could ask me this story a hundred times at different places, and I can tell you this. And same. your experience has been rather traumatic. Very traumatic. We are <laughs> going to be doing some overnights here to see what can we capture on camera with our equipment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that could be helpful if you were... I would be willing to come in, as long as I know you guys are here. You're going to be willing. I would be willing you know. to draw them into me, if, okay. if they would. Okay, good. You know, I, would, I would be more than willing. This could kind of help you as far as your feelings towards it. <laughs> yeah. Give you a little bit more courage. I've gotten over it. You got, okay. <laughs> I use the Lord as my Savior. Yeah. When I go yeah. upstairs, yeah. when I used to go upstairs, I got so scared, I would say, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, mm -hmm. and yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Yeah. Okay. And that would help me get through this yeah. night, yeah. every okay. night when I was here. Excellent. Okay. And that's about all I can tell you. But Thank it, you for it sharing your story. Oh, no, no thank you. I and appreciate that. And hopefully you can come with us when we do the overnight to see Sure, you. I would love to. Okay, thank you. And now we will go on and talk to another one of the members. Okay. Hi, I'm Laura Macy, and welcome back to Ghost Hunters. We have Brenda Kreitel with us. Um, tell us what you can about your experiences it's here. It's just one quick little story. Um, I used to work here in the evenings, and most of the things happen in the evenings when you get ready to close, and I had just locked the front door. There's a ramp that comes up to another door that leads into the canteen. And um, there used to be a monitor that sat right next to the cash register. So I'm ringing out the cash register and um, I see out of the corner of my eye in the monitor a white figure come through the door. And it even startled me enough to where I actually looked over at the door and I thought, yeah, I was going to tell them we're closed, mm -hmm. we're locked. Then I realized, yeah. oh, I just locked that door. I locked both of those doors. So. I hurried up and at that point, um, you know, counted my money and just put everything in the safe and got out. <laughs> I did, that was the only experience that I'd ever had. So, but uh, up to that point, I'd never really believed or um, I knew that phenomena occur. Mm -hmm. um, they've happened in my family, but I've never been subject to anything until that day. And that was the only incident that you <clears throat> Only incident that I've ever, because anytime I ever closed, I always kept the TV up loud or because uh -huh. I've heard of noises upstairs and in the basement and I didn't want to experience them. So oh dear. I just kept the TVs up loud and that was the last thing that I'd shut off before I'd walk out that front door. So now it came in the door, it walked past you, didn't order a drink, I take it. Oh no, it, no? It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't there. Anything? I saw it walk through the door. It wasn't on the other side of the door when I turned and looked. I could see it go through the door, but it wasn't there whenever I turned and looked. Was it, could you tell if it was a man or a woman? It was appeared it to be a man. A man? Yeah, the, the size and shape. What was he wearing? I mean, could you tell it, by there the was, outline? There was nothing, it was just a white orb that walked through the door, really? just a white figure that walked through the door, but it was a larger figure, it wasn't a woman figure. Mm -hmm. and, right. and that was it. And nothing was disturbed? Or no. How about the next morning when the, because I assume a bartender will open it then the next, mm -hmm. open the canteen the next morning, was there anything out of the ordinary? Like after you left, not that do you I'm think anything? Not that I'm aware of. of. Hmm. Well, I never really shared the story until like, um, I don't know, several weeks later, but the daytime barmaid at that time is no longer Mm -hmm. employed here so right. and that's been a few years about a year and a half two years ago <clears throat> wow how did you feel um i was nervous a little scared like i said i hurried up and counted my money and okay. 
got out of here like real quick. <laughs> Called my husband because he, you know, being on Third Street, he um, would meet me in the parking lot and mm -hmm. watch me walk out so that I was safe. Mm -hmm. And um, I called him and said, get here, get here quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm counting my money now and I'm out. <laughs> wow. So mm -hmm. it, it frightened me a little bit. Yeah. And uh, as I, I think I'm repeating myself only once. Only the one time. Yeah. Like I said, it's just a quick story for me. I'm not, I, I, I'm not real subject to um, any kind of weird phenomena or anything like that. So. That was my first and only, and yeah, definitely I'm a believer on that. I know it exists. I know it happens wow. because I did experience the one time. Wow. Well, thank you, so. Brenda. <laughs> uh, do you have any reservations about closing by yourself now? I mean, are you almost expecting him to come through again? Um, what like would I you said, think if like he came I through said, again? Like I said, when I'd probably try to, um, you know, be a little more receptive, I think. Mm -hmm. because I've seen it happen once before and I know that they exist here mm -hmm. um, so I would probably be a little more receptive to it cool all yeah. right <laughs> a little on the nervous side but I'd probably be receptive yeah. thank you you're welcome thank you <laughs> Brenda thank, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay William Weath is with us could you help us out tell yes me a little bit about have you experienced anything here at the post yes uh, okay. I come here quite frequently mm-hmm and uh, I've, I'm an artist, and I've hung all these f pictures on the wall. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. So there's a, one particular picture up here that every time I came in, it was crooked. Really? Yes. It, it was always, always changed, hmm. just day after day. So finally, I put a piece of tape on the corner and taped it to the wall. Mm -hmm. So now it does not move. Really? So I don't think anything can move it now. That's interesting. So do you think maybe whatever this presence is just didn't like either the picture or the way you hung it or where you hung it? I think that uh, it was just moved every day intentionally. What was the subject of the picture? Uh, 911. Which one is it? Ah. Which picture is it? It's a, it's a, it's a blue one up, up in the center. Yeah, you might want to get a shot then of that. About the trade trade towers, yeah. <clears throat> it's interesting. Uh, it's upstairs. All upstairs. Upstairs by the machine. Okay, I'll get it. Yeah. It's, yeah, I framed it, and mm -hmm. it's a 911 mm -hmm. photograph. Isn't that something? Yeah, but it was moved every day. Really? I wonder if whatever the presence was, or whomever, whoever was disturbed by the subject matter or the way you hung it or, or something. I don't know, but it was definitely moved every day. And none of the others had been shifted at all? Just that one? Just the one. Huh. I wonder if that was an art critic. And finally, I just taped it to the wall mm -hmm. to see if I could have an effect. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't been changed since. Really? That's so. interesting. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Now, has anything been hung since that? That's no. No. Okay. So it's kind of, huh? I wonder. Is that interesting? And none of the other photographs and pictures on the walls have been changed. Just that one particular one. Just that one. How about other decor? Like, suppose you decorate here for a holiday, or you slap a snowflake on the wall for the winter uh, or Christmas. No. Nothing. Not, nothing there. No. Really? Just, just the photograph, the nine one one. Yeah, so it must it must be the subject matter. I would say. Yeah, not the fact that you're, unless there was something on that. What, what was on the wall before? Nothing. Uh, what was it on? I mean, yeah, what was going on with that wall before you tried to hang a picture? Uh, actually, nothing. Nothing. Hmm. And that room had been. Is that the room where the bodies, the embalming room? This was the garage area where the hearse were parked. Right. But Stable that way. Yeah. Because the kitchen was the crematory, I heard. I think so. So that would have been the embalming room. Hmm. Yeah. So there was something either with that area or more likely, though, the subject matter that yeah. is disturbing a presence here. I believe there's a lot happening in that room, yes. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. And I think you may pick it up on your your investigation, you know, I, with that, your equipment. They will. I, 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 they will. 
I'm sure our producer will focus on this, on that photo over there. Hi, we have Pauline with us. Tell me about your experiences here. What's been going on? Um, it was quite a few years back, about three or four years back. Um, I was bartending here, mm -hmm. and as I was bartending, it was close to closing time. It was like about nine, between nine and ten, somewhere around in there. And I only had a couple customers in the post, and they were sitting on a on the far side of me over here and there was just a couple of them and they were involved in a conversation and I just went about my business and was stocking the bar and things like that and I had a hoodie t-shirt on like a little hoodie mm -hmm. and um, I had my hair up and as I was grabbing a bottle and not even leaning over my hoodie flipped up completely over my head. <laughs> really? Yeah. And I thought one of them were practical, practical joking me. Mm -hmm. And I turned around and I said, what are y'all doing to me? <laughs> and they did, had no clue what I was talking about. They didn't have enough time to come behind my bar and then get to their seat where they were sitting. Right, and flip the hood and get back. Right. <laughs> hmm. um, did you feel anything behind you? Like, could you feel anybody passing behind you? Did you it felt like I had, there was a presence there. Really? And I kept glancing at them and I seen them still sitting there so I knew that there was nobody else coming in the door because I would hear the door click or the mm -hmm. door open but there was nobody else in here. Hmm. It was just the two of them. Now when the hood was pushed up could you feel any pressure? I mean it I, was just like somebody grabbed the tip of your hoodie mm -hmm. and just flipped it up but it really? completely covered my face. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then Okay, so then you address the other people, saying, what are you doing? Yeah, I was like, what are y'all trying to do to me? <laughs> Did you turn around at all? Like, could you feel anything Oh, I flipped in your around way? so quick that they didn't have, I knew that nobody had enough time to get back in the seat that they were sitting at where they were sitting. Hmm. Because they would have to go out the bar and all the way around. <laughs> yeah, so that There was no work. way. And, and then after that, did, did you experience anything like that again? There was a time, um, it was shortly after my mom had passed, mm -hmm. and I was in here playing darts, and I kind of, we used to have a machine that was sitting over in this corner, mm -hmm. and um, that was upstairs over in the corner, it was the bowling machine, and I just, I kept seeing something over off my peripheral vision, mm -hmm. and I glanced over, and I, my mom was standing there. Really? Yeah. Well, that's nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Has she been back? No, I haven't seen her. Mm -hmm. Before she passed, had she been a guest here? Had she, had she frequented this place at all? I think many years ago. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, because um, my father is a lifetime member here, and he's also passed. Um, so I, I know that many years ago, as they were married, she was in here. That's interesting. So it could be actually now, because I was wondering if possibly the hood flipper could have been uh, a former, shall we say, client here, because mm -hmm. it was a funeral parlor. Yeah. So I was wondering if that was a former client, but now we have the possibility that the former members or those members who have passed on have mm -hmm. are come back, you know, for a nightcap yeah. or something, and how nice that it would be your mom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that, would you have a fear of that? No. Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah, oh. and I've never felt afraid in here. Mm -hmm. I just feel like, you know, that night that my hoodie got flipped up, I just felt like it's a practical joker. Right. You know, somebody just likes to have fun, because I've always tried to have fun with all the customers here, and mm -hmm. try to make it upbeat and just fun to come back to. Right. Interesting. How about that? So, we've got, so now we've got two separate possibilities. As I said, the former clients or a former member. I love it. That's great. So, so did when the hoodie incident, I know I keep going back and forth, with the hoodie incident, and no one saw, obviously, no one saw mm -hmm. anything. No, they it. had no clue what I was talking about. Hmm. And I flipped, when I turned around, the hoodie was still on, on mm -hmm. my head. And I was like, who's doing this to me? <laughs> and he's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, really. <laughs> So they probably thought you just put it up yourself. Mm -hmm. And now your mom was standing where? 
she was standing upstairs in the corner okay, by, by the, the bowling machine. Yeah. By the bowling machine. And I was throwing darts upstairs mm -hmm. in this corner. It mm -hmm. was just a small distance away. Was she talking to anybody? Was she there for long? No, it just... was just a split second. Really? Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. I love Thank you.